I was 100% planned. Just give us a specific message today. And God is always. <laughs> you know, I always say if there was, if God was a baseball player, he'd be a pitcher. And I promise you his favorite pitch would be a curveball. <laughs> he loves throwing me curveballs but they always go over the plate and every time i try to swing at a time i always miss it every single time so i, I learned my my lesson just wait until he wait until the pitch is thrown and then swing and then you'll see where it's going just know your pitcher know your pitcher well his message today to me this isn't what i think what he wants me to say. I know what he wants me to say. He wants me to talk about volume. Volume. Because this is what the world is spitting out right now. Loud volume. And you know right away what verse he has pulled up in my heart. That wonderful verse in 1 Kings where he was not in the earthquake. But he was a, in a gentle whisper. Right now almost all of us are focusing on the volume of this world and the volume is only coming from the megaphones of a precious few that have turned it up to such a loud blast we're just focusing everything on that we think it's taking place over everything over every single area we're looking specifically on that physical and we're not focusing on the spiritual where god gives us that instruction in a gentle whisper one of my most popular posts that I put on was that the simple whispered prayer of a child is more powerful than the collective shout of an entire nation. And I'll repost that on my, uh, on my, on my page here tonight along with this. You know, that's, worth, that's worth following up on. Because God speaks in a whisper. Because he doesn't need to speak any louder than that. His truth is so powerful, a whisper answers everything that's as loud as we need to hear it because it's the impact I'll give you a perfect example to a physical example a magnifying glass when you you look at the the light of the Sun you feel the warmth of the Sun and you shine it when you whenever you shine a light that sunlight under a magnifying glass and you angle it exactly right and you, and you, and then you make that light concentric, centralize that to a very small point. What happens? It becomes very strong to the point where it can start a fire. It gets hot and powerful. You, you do that, and when we have that, we have that together. It is a, it is a powerful force. But yet you have a series of just a whole bunch of gentle lights all coming together, centralized into one small point. This is why unity in the body of Christ is so strongly emphasized. Because when we come together as a body of Christ, we are, we are so strong and so unified. Nobody can touch us in the land. And we walk in a solid truth. And God speaks to us in the whisper, which is the point of this message. But as ultimately as the body of Christ, we come together and this is where it ultimately is the strength. So it starts in a whisper. It starts in a whisper of truth. There's the core, there's the root. See, we always, we always go to the branches of the tree and we misinterpret a lot of the scriptures. We take that to say that you can always tell the root by the fruit. So we always look at the fruit. We never attempt to understand the root. And the root starts with a whisper. Always starts with a whisper. Right now, the world is shouting big time. And nearly all of us are falling for it. Hook, line, and slinger. We're listening to what the media tells us. We're listening to what other people tell us. And we're living in fear. These masks that they're having us put on right now. You know the the point of the the point of that message the point of the mask is to, so we don't give that any possible infection to other people. But be honest with me. When you put that mask on and you go into a facility, how many of you are thinking, "I got this mask on for protection for myself"? 
Come on. Come on. You heard in the background, just to keep you from making other people sick if I have something. But how many people, how, you're, you're going in there and you're wearing a mask and you thought, okay, I've got protection. Now I'm hiding. I'm hiding. You see somebody without a mask and, you, and, you, and you're stepping back away from them. You're stepping back away from them. You're living in fear. It's fear. That's the volume of the world talking. The whisper of God tells you the truth of his heart and gives you a greater revelation of something that you haven't seen with your eyes. Eyes not seen nor ear heard, but God has revealed to us by his spirit. I can't tell you how many times I've had to re repeat that verse in 1 Corinthians. My gosh, how many times has that been misquoted and misinterpreted and just totally just confused the body of Christ so much? But the revelation of what he gives to us is through a whisper, through a basic truth, a simple, honest, basic truth. We love to complicate things as, as, as a species, as human beings, as carnal beings. We try to do things ourselves, and as a result of that, we try to complicate matters to make things more multi-layered. Because that's the only way that we can say, well, it's got to be, you know, if we're so complicated, God has got to be infinitely more complicated. But no, God is infinitely more simple. And this is the disconnect by so many Christians today. He is so simple. We just cannot understand and connect with that. We can't accept it. That he can be that simple, a God that powerful, that omnipotent, that amazing, that when he can do everything and be that simple and bat, that basic in us. And it all starts with a whisper. He speaks to us in a whisper. Be still and know that I am God. That's the only way we can know that he's God when we're still. And when we're still and everything is quiet, we can hear him. As First Kings always tells us, he wasn't in the earthquake. He was in a still small voice and God is the same yesterday today and tomorrow this is outside of time he has seen you from everything that you have done everything you're doing and everything you will do and he if he has already spoken to you and told you that he's loved you he has seen you at the end of your life because he's outside of the very cycle that we live in we live in this linear cycle of time but he is outside of time and seeing you through everything that you're doing and talk to you there. Doesn't that give you encouragement? It does me. It really does. This world has thrown a lot of, a, a lot of things my way, but they're only physical things. They've thrown things economically my way, thrown things financially, I mean, financially materially, Physically, you know, I have had relatives, family members who have passed. I've had conflicts with people in this world. I have conflicts with people in my ministry who have looked at God through physical eyes. They have not looked at him through spiritual eyes. They have not looked at him and looked at themselves through what he has already provided us in the spirit. He has provided every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And when we... When I give that message to people, I want to help them see that revelation of what he has already provided to us. Because we are ultimately spirits. This physical covering, right now we are so enamored by the physical. We only want God to manifest us in the physical. To provide to us what we need here in this world. Not what he's already, not to reveal to us what he's already given to us. Do you believe the Bible is the perfect word of God? Do you, do you not know that the Bible is the perfect word of God? If you know and you read the Bible and you say that is absolutely truth, 100%, then that verse that says that he has provided every spiritual blessing is a truth. And when we pray to God, we have to pray to him for him to reveal that to us. To help us to walk in the revelation of what he's already given us. 
and then we walk in a foundation of strength. We already have everything because he has provided to us. So we have to condition our minds to be not conformed to this world, but be renewed by the transforming of our mind. I think I read that somewhere. Y'all remember what book that's from? Guys, it is, I've been, I've been exactly where so many people have been before. But the message that God, I, that I wanted to give at this point was Jesus walking in our shoes. And that's going to be, that's going to be coming at some point, I'm sure. But this is the message that he wanted me to say today. That it all starts in a whisper. And I know in my heart, if I had given that message before, it would fall on deaf ears. So many deaf ears. We have to be quiet, be still. Open our hearts and hear his whisper and let that fuel the foundation of our roots. And then we can grow in him. And then, for me, the fruit, <laughs> I'm just so in love with the root, I don't care about the fruit. <laughs> I don't care about the fruit. Every, so many Christians are just so worried about the fruit. Let's look at the fruit. It's all about the fruit. Look at the branches. We gotta look at the branches. This is all that matters right now at this point. Yeah, the yeah, the root's good. We'll worry about that one day, but look at the fruit. We need to pray. We worry about the fruit. Just go to the root. Be still. Be still. And no. There's knowledge again. There's knowledge. I've had so many Christians come to me and say, you know, you always talk about knowledge, man. You've got to, it's all about faith. You've got to have knowledge because if you know something to be true, you can't be shaken. And that's a foundation. That is a root. You're the whisper that God has spoken to you and you get through that relationship with him helps strengthen that root to help build your foundation, to help you grow in the knowledge in him. And that fuels your faith. My own people perish due to a lack of knowledge. If it was all about faith, he would not have said that. He would not have said that. We have got to know him when you know the God you're praying with. You know, I didn't say praying to, praying with, because it is, it is a joint venture. When you know the God you're praying with, it becomes life and life starts at a root it starts with a seed and it begins with a whisper when you're quiet when you're still and when you're still you can know him and it all ties in oh my goodness god bless y'all i love it when he just throws a spontaneous curve on my way i've never been a big baseball fan but my goodness, he loves a curveball. God loves the curveball. I think I hit this one out the park. What do you think? God bless you. Have a great night. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.